we talked earlier in this in this uh, unit about the periodic table and there's different ways the periodic table is wonderful and it's um, there's different ways to chunk it up I want to talk one more way about how to chunk up the elements on the periodic table and we're going to talk then how you actually can use that to your advantage to come up with an electron configuration. It's an alternate way to using the arrow diagram but I almost hesitate to show students this sometimes. But aside from that we would call these first two groups on the periodic table group 1a and group 2a. The, um, we would call those actually S block elements and they are S block in that as we are finding homes for electrons, the, the last electrons to be added are electrons in an S-type subshell. Skipping over to what's pink on this periodic table, these actually six, um, these six columns, or these six groups, they actually are what we call P-block elements because as we're finding homes for electrons, we are the last ones to find homes for are actually in a P-type subshell. Not so coincidentally, or not coincidentally at all, actually you see we have six here and how many, how many um, electrons can fit in a P-type subshell? Six. Very good. Then we go on to the group B elements. You see the tan there actually as we are finding homes for electrons, we are finding homes for electrons. Um, the last one to find homes for electrons, last subshell, excuse me, <laughs> that we populate is a D type subshell. So we call these the D block elements. How many electrons can we put in a D type subshell? 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right. And the type of subshell we didn't talk about yet is the F-type subshell. All these electrons down, excuse me, all these elements down here, the lanthanide elements and the actinide elements, they are all considered F-block elements. Okay, so as we kind of scoot across and find homes for electrons, we are, um, those electrons, the last subshell they'll be added to are F-type subshells. Okay, cool. So I brought in this periodic table to kind of show you how this works. Now we call these S block. This is S. Okay, these guys over here were what? P? Okay, these guys actually we call these D, but not just D, we call them N minus 1. Okay, D. And down here we had N minus 2 F block elements. I don't know if you can read that very well. So I'm going to switch my colors here to red. So the way this works is that, for instance, if you wanted the electron configuration of silicon, well, we could knock out the abbreviated rare gas. We know that we're going to have to base it on neon, so I'd write neon, okay? And then beyond neon, I would kind of think of it, if I'm going from silicon, I would think of it beyond neon, Okay, which is in what, period two. I'm going to go to period three, and I'm going to put two electrons in my 3s, and I'm going to put two electrons in my 3p. See how that works? So I say three, two electrons, two electrons, my 3p. So that actually kind of quick and dirty is the rare gas notation for silicon. Abbreviated, excuse me, abbreviated rare gas notation for silicon. Let me pick one down here. What I don't like is when it goes through the lanthanide and actinide series. That kind of drives me nuts. Um, let's go ahead and pick on um, tellurium right before iodine. We did iodine in class. Okay, but let's pick on tellurium. Tellurium is got, what, 52 electrons I need to find homes for. Now, if I write the abbreviated rare gas notation, which rare gas am I going to go for? So tellurium's in period 5, I would need to go to the rare gas in period 4, so that would be krypton. So I'm going to go KR, alright. So beyond KR, what do I need to do? Well, let's see, beyond KR, that's period 4, I'm going to kind of period 5 here. I'm going to take these two, it's S block, and it's 5S, 5S2, and now I'm going to cross a, the D block, but notice it's not N, it's not the period, it's N minus 1. So these guys, these what, 10, 
right? 10 guys right here, these 10 electrons, actually are going to be in not 5, but 4D. 4D10. That's how that works. And that brings me over here to indium. So all I need to do is hop, jump, and skip one, two, three, four, four electrons, and I'm back to the um, the N. Okay, so that's five P four electrons, five P four electrons. So that's how that goes. Again, you don't have the arrow diagram will get you to the same place that kind of this quick and dirty dirty look at the periodic table will get you to. I need to, I'm not going to do an example, but I just need to warn you that, for instance, if you pick iridium, oh, iridium is pretty cool, if you pick iridium, notice you're going to base it on which rare gas? Well, it's in period 6, so you'd base it on xenon, be our rare gas, but you're going to have to hop and jump over here, this would be 6s2, but, and I'm not going to do it because it confuses me, but notice that we are going to actually have to go down through the um, N minus 2F block um, and include those 14 electrons. So again, I would use the arrow diagram if I was going to um, come up with electron configuration for iridium. But for, I don't know, it's, it's a possibility. It's out there. Don't let it confuse you and get the wrong answer.